Welcome everybody. In this video, I'm going to talk about changing page formats. So at this point with auto layout, all of my pages are single photos on a page where the photo fits the entire page. As a starting point, I want to combine these two photos onto one page. So I'm going to click on this page here and then to change the page format, I can either click on the downward triangle there or I can click on the downward triangle in the page panel. I'll go ahead and click on it here and you'll see that we have tons and tons of page formats in here. So just amongst the one photo page formats, I have a long list of page formats. So anytime you see a gray square, that's where a photo goes, and then lines represent text. So these formats allow you to add text. And of course, we have two photo layouts, three photo layouts with and without text, four photo layouts. Notice that we have layouts with and without borders here. And then we get into even more photos, like grids and ways to arrange lots of photos, etc. Now, I might as well point out that there are some categories down here that just kind of organize these layouts. So if I click on clean, I'm seeing just clean, simple photos on a page, no text, always with a white border. Creative has got etched borders on them. And then we have some other categories here as well. Now for this particular example, I'm going to go back to two photos and I'm going to choose to put the two photos on the page next to each other with a white border. Now as soon as I clicked on that format, it applied it to this page. So that's why it jumped me out so quickly there. So I can see the format here and if I turn on my guides, I'll see that I have a second location here to put a photo. Now I'll come down to this photo and I'll click and drag it into that gray square. So now I've got both on the page. I think I want to reverse these though. So I'm going to click and drag this photo over to the right just to swap them. And then down here, I can eliminate these two pages. So click, shift, click, right click, remove pages. And now if I select this page and I go to two page spread and I turn off the guides, you'll see exactly what it looks like. Now it's kind of bothering me that they're so close together. I want to add a little spacing in here. Now with a page format, the photo cells are fixed. So I can't move these photo cells, but I can move the photos within the cells. I'm going to do that using the cell panel here. Now the cell panel is grayed out because I don't have a cell selected. So I can click on this cell to make it active. Then Lightroom knows what I want to affect the padding on. If I click and drag right now on any of the sliders, you'll see that they all move together. That's certainly a great way to get smaller photos than the designed cell, but that's not what I'm looking for. Right now, all of the sliders are linked together. So I'm going to click on this little square here to unlink all of the sliders. And I just want to add a little bit of padding on the right hand side of the left cell. So I'll just make this maybe 10 and I can type 10 in if I want. And then I'll click on this photo here and I'll unlink the padding. And on the left hand side, I'll add 10. We'll see, this may be too much space. Now you may have noticed that I only added padding on the left, but I do have a little more space now at the top and the bottom. That's because for these particular photos, I have them set to fit the cells rather than fill the cells. Therefore, when I make the cell smaller on one side, in order to still show the entire photo, it's got to shrink it vertically as well. And then I'll click on the gray border here so I can actually see the page. So that feels more comfortable to me. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to multi-page view here and we'll do a couple more page formats. So I have a set of these four photos here that again, I want to combine onto one page. So I'll select the first page and I'm going to come up to the page panel I could just click on this arrow. It's just that if I do that, the options menu is going to drop below my video screen here and I want you to see the whole thing. So I'll come over to here, click on this little drop down. I'll choose four photo formats. I'm going to choose some with a border in between them as well. 
Now I'm not seeing those gray squares indicating that there are more photocells here. I don't have to see them. I can just click and drag photos and drop them in. But sometimes it helps me to remember by turning on the guides, turning on the photocell guide so I see those. And then I can click and drag here. And of course, even once they're on the page, I can rearrange them. So I'll click and drag to swap these two. Now in this particular page, I'll go to multi-page view here, the photos look odd to me being different shapes. So I'm going to choose with these photos to zoom to fill the cells so that they're all the same shape. So I'll right click in this cell, zoom to fill cell, click and drag, right click in this one, zoom to fill, right click in this one, and at this point it gets painful for you to be watching here, but I'll finish it up anyway. Okay, so now I've got four photos, all the same size. I have the same issue here that to me the padding is just a little too tight for me. So I'm going to select this first cell and I need to add a little padding on the right side and a little padding on the bottom one in this case. So I'll come down to the cell section, unlink all, and I've experimented with this. So on the right I'm going to add five and on the bottom I'll add five. And I'll come over to this cell. Now each cell has all of these linked, so I have to be careful to unlink them before I type in the numbers on just two of them, or they're all four going to move at the same time, and these will not end up lined up as I expect. Trust me, I've made this mistake many times. So select the cell, unlink all, and on the left of this one I'll add five, and on the bottom I'll add five. And on this cell, I want to add to the top and the right, so I'll unlink all, five in the top, five on the right, and then on this one, unlink all, and then this will be the top and the left, top, left. So I'm just typing and then clicking in the next box, and then I'm clicking out here to get out of that box, and I can see that I made a little bit of a mistake here. So I need to see this bigger. I'll go to, to single page view, and what I'm seeing is on this one, if I hover over it, you can see I added to the top and the left. If I hover over this one, I added to the top and the bottom. So I didn't mean to add padding to the bottom, I meant to add it to the right. So on the bottom, I'll set this back to zero, and on the right, I'll set this to five, click out of there, and I'm good to go. So Lightroom doesn't allow you to modify the page layouts, but you can use padding to fine-tune what you're getting out of the page layouts. I'll go back to multi-page view here, and let's go ahead and move to a two-page spread. So let's say that this photo, because it's so wide, I'd like it to span both pages. So I'll select this page here, I'll come up to the page panel, click on the drop-down, and I'm going to choose two-page spreads. And this time I'm going to choose one that has a white border around it. You're going to see why I'm going to end up changing the formats on all the rest of the pages to also have a white border around them. Now here's my two-page spread. In the process, Lightroom created an extra blank page there. So I'm simply going to click, shift, click, right click, and remove pages. Now I could go with it exactly as it is, or maybe I want to move it over to the right a little bit. I'll select the page, go to spread view, and then I want to add some more padding on the left-hand side. Now I have the page selected, but the padding is still grayed out. That's because I need to have the photo selected. So if things aren't working in Lightroom's book module and you're frustrated, it's probably because you don't have the right thing selected. So the page versus the photo cell versus text cells. Okay, so I'm going to unlink all here, and I'm going to slide the left padding over. So that looks better to me. I'll go ahead and go back to multi-page view and I'm good to go. Now another thing I want to show you is how to change multiple pages all at once. I've decided that I don't like the fact that these photos bleed all the way to the edge. That I like having a white border. It feels more peaceful to me. Photos leading all the way to the edge gives me a feeling of more energy but this subject is more of a peaceful, quiet subject to me. So I'm going to add white borders. Now, of course, I could do this on one page at a time. That would be really painful. 
Alternatively, I can just select all of the pages that I want to change this layout on. So I clicked on the first, I can control or command, click on the next, control or command, click on the next, and I could go through the entire book clicking on all of the single photo pages. Let me show you an, an alternative though that will be handy for you occasionally. I'll click in the gray and I'll go up to edit select all photo cells. Now I've got them all selected and I can now deselect the ones I don't want to affect. So control or command click on this one that takes it out of the selection now. Control or command click on that one and I'll just very carefully remove from the selection any that I don't want the page format to change on. And then I'm going to come up down to the drop down here in the page panel, choose a one photo layout, but I'll go with this one with a white border around it. And then I'll click away. And then as I scroll down, you'll see that all of the photos have that consistent white border. I like that much better. Now I can see that when I created this four photo page, I forgot to delete the three pages that I took photos off of. So click, shift, click, right click, remove pages. Now one last thing I noticed here is that this photo for some reason is very high in the cell. So I could click on it and add some padding on the top to push it down. But actually I don't think I want this photo right after the cover photo anyway. So let me go ahead and take this photo and swap it with that one. Now oh, down here I'll click on this unlink all and add some top padding to bring that down. All right, two more quick things to talk about. As you work with the book module, you're going to end up with some favorite page layouts. I'm going to show you how to save these as favorites so that you don't have to scroll through all of the options. So I'm going to come into the drop down in the page panel and let's say that this is my, one of my favorite one photo layouts. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say add layout to favorites. Now it's going to show up in this favorite section. Let's go to the two photo layouts and I'll come down here and get this two photo one. Now I'm so tempted to left click on this page. If I do, I'm going to change the format of whatever page I have selected out here. I don't want to do that. If I do that, of course, I can control or command Z to undo. But what I want to do is right click and add layout to favorites. And I'll take this one here as well. I like that for a vertical solution. Add that to favorites. And then of course I can come through some of these other sections and add more to the favorites. Now I'm going to pause the video while I add just a few more to my favorites. Okay, now I'm going to click on favorites here for creating books from now on. All you have to do is click on favorites and then you can quickly find the layouts that you commonly use. Now the other advantage of assigning favorites is that you can create auto layout presets that start your book out by using these formats. So we'll be covering that in a separate video, but that relies on you having assigned page layouts to favorites. All right, I'm going to click out of this. Now the last thing I want to show you in this video, it seems like there's always just one more thing I want to show you. What I want to do is use this layout elsewhere in the book. Now this was not just a page format. It was a page format and then I added padding in here to increase the space. So I'm going to use this down here a little bit further and I'm going to put these two photos onto one page. So I'm going to right click in this page and I'm going to choose to copy the layout. Then I'm going to come down to where I want to put this two photo page. So I'm going to right click in this page and I'll say paste layout. What it's going to do is create a new page with that layout. It didn't replace the layout that was on the page I right clicked on. But now I can click and drag these photos into here and then right click, zoom to fill, right click, zoom to fill, adjust this a little bit. And now I can go ahead and delete these two pages. Right click, remove pages. And I can see that I accidentally removed one too many. Not a problem. So I'll click on this one. I want a blank page after this. So I'll add a blank page there. And I think I'm back to being in good shape here and ready to go. Okay, so this concludes the video on working with page layouts. In the next video, 
I'm going to talk about adding text to your book. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's 15 minutes from my Producing Great Output series, almost 12 hours of training in 55 videos. In this series, you'll master Lightroom's book, print, slideshow, and web modules, as well as all of the output concepts that I find often confuse and frustrate photographers. Click on the link below this video to find out more about this series and my other Lightroom video series. I hope they make using Lightroom as fun for you as it is for me. I'm Laura Shue.